So welcome back to Dayton, Ohio, the U.S. Air Force Museum Hangar 2 of 4. And although this is Cold War in Vietnam, you immediately see a Global Hawk, which is a really big freaking aircraft, as is the Reaper up there. You also don't expect to see an F-22, which that particular one was built in 91. And then you actually do move into the Korean War section. So they have a key track here, the uh, Cleveland Tractor Company. This was the vehicle, and I mean, I don't know if I can see anything to give you a perspective of size, except maybe the sandbags. Somebody had the great idea of putting a three-inch gun on this and calling it a tank destroyer. It did not work. So you go quickly through some of the various billboards. I've always thought this uh, design was interesting, having the rotary engine at the bottom. The drive shaft goes all the way through the cockpit to get to the gearbox behind them, then up with another one off to the, uh, to the right. So the idea was this was a conformal lifeboat that you would hang under a B-29 and you would parachute it down to your colleagues if they got shot down. It's an interesting idea. The B-29 command decision apparently dropped one and a quarter million pound, sorry, one and a quarter, yeah, hang on, two million five hundred thousand pounds of bombs. And if you convert that to tonnage, good lord, that is a lot of tons of bombs, and it also shot down five makes, jets. You can do a very brief walk through down there, which I'm not going to. Yeah, two million five hundred thousand pounds. At two thousand pounds, that cannot be right. A B-45, or an RB-45 more accurately, recon aircraft, I think. Tornado. interesting pod design. You almost get the idea, though, that's where they came up with it for the 52. But you'll see other aircraft will have that twin pod as well. In another hangar. So uh, it's uh, there's a P80, P84, P80? Let's see. 94, Starfire, my bad. And a very colorful F-84. Of course, this was the era of the all-metal birds. And we have ourselves another B-26. Except this time they moved the gun pods from the fuselage and they have hung them under the wings. Military Air Transport Service, predecessor of uh, AMC, I guess. Twin Lightning, uh, correction, Twin Mustang. So according to the signs, it is an entirely new design and they did not actually take two P-51s and slice them together. That's what they say. I'm not gonna argue with them. Six Saber. I thought there was a MIG around here somewhere. Now oh, here's your F-80. Shooting star. Again, it looks like it's in pretty reasonable condition. The F-22 is not a small aircraft. And just for contrast, I have an old one up here.
B-52s just start sitting around a lot of places. Sort of a deceptively sized aircraft. The fuselage isn't actually all that huge. You'd expect it to be larger with eight engines and the massive wingspan. Wild weasels. And a 5G, so you got the standard missile. And it's, I, I guess it's a great design because you, the standard SM-1, SM-2 used by the Navy is an anti-aircraft missile. There was a uh, anti-ship version carried by Asheville class boats. Trike. F-105 is again not a small aircraft. You, you look at scale models of these things and you don't understand just how big they really are. One SA-2 guideline. And we have ourselves a slough. Hiding underneath the, the buff. I don't know why, I always like the A7. Then again, I also have always liked the F-111. With uh, retarded bombs. A warrior or something like that. Destroyer, my bad. RB-66. They have a section there for the BAT-2-1 recovery. Selection of guided weapons from Vietnam. So walleye, GB weight, couple of bull pups. If somebody can tell me what that kangaroo is doing on the uh, on the arse end of the of this F4, I'll be curious to know. Another lovely design. I always like those F4s. We have ourselves another F-105. Hiding behind that constellation back there. We're in front of, yeah. One fish bed. Pretty reasonable markings it looks like. And a 17, I think. It's like a caribou. What is this? It is a caribou. Sometimes I get it right. Some of these aircraft can be pretty large. C-123 provider. Yes, it is a 17. Came in up there with the unique rotor intermesh system. And a Jolly Green Giant. Iroquois. And an OB-10. I mean, it's in Vietnam. They were still using these things in Desert Storm. Yeah, was it OB2 or something like that? This B26 is apparently basically a World War II aircraft that got taken out of reserve again and again and again. Flew to the museum in 1980, it says. O2. Well, I knew there was an O and a 2 in there somewhere. Canberra. If Argentina didn't use them in the Falcons, I probably wouldn't know as much about them. British aircraft built under license in the US. A 
and that looks like a Super Saber. Next to Adishka. And that is a Recon Bird. Voodoo. Yay. It is a Super Saber. And an A1 Sky Raider. No toilet mounted under the wings, I notice. And thus ends Hangar 2, so let's quickly move on to Hangar 3. So again, apparently that little guy, I can't remember what they called it, flew many, many years ago. It looks a lot more futuristic than it really is. So our, any Russian spies can have a good look at the F-22's thrust vectoring, I guess. Oh look, Russian spies. And on the Berlin Wall, Berlin Airlift. Aircraft were vertically separated by 500 feet and horizontally by Pretty reasonable display of model aircraft here. Probably shooting dog. Okay, so now we enter the Cold War Gallery. And this is one of those whoa moments when you come in, you got a peacemaker to your right, you got a spirit and a B1 to your left. And a whole bunch of other things that you may or may not know. In my case I usually don't until I start looking at the signs. Oh yeah, just have a thermonuclear bomb just scattered in the middle of the hallway there. I saw one of these in the Strategic Air Command Museum in Nebraska. Absolutely massive thing. It took up the entire hangar over there. T-33 with wing-mounted rocket pods. The Canadians get a look in with their uh, CF-100. Of course you would expect, as they are part of NORAD, that the Canadians would get some sort of representation at the Air Force Museum. Sabre Dog, I think this is. Sabre D. And Dennis the Menace. That's actually a very good cartoon of him. And they've got another twin Mustang. Why not have two when you can... Why have one? RF-86 and this is uh, like a KC-29 or something is it? Hang on. Do I have it wrong? I have it wrong. It's a bit like a flying banana. Thunder's Creek. Aha, here is our KC. Looks suspiciously like a B-17 that has been modified for the aerial refueling role. And we have here a completely panel removed and fully intact aircraft. Saber. You can kind of pause that and have a look. Albatross. A 
I'm sure there's probably some model maker somewhere who is going to scratch build each and every part of this. And a few more cruise missiles here and there. Refueling boom. And a hustler, which is a lot smaller than you think it is. What's this a wheel off of? This thing is massive. XB36 landing gear. Hundred ten inch. I see somebody put that under the monster truck. Largest camera ever installed in an aircraft. A bunch more nukes. Why do you need four on the one pile on there or one rack? Because you miss one, I guess. They do have some refreshments up there. Yeah, one or two. I've always liked the darts, deltas. B-47, again sort of the twin engine pods, only six engines in that one. This was the first sort of real spy plane. The camber. The U-2 is a lot smaller than you think it is as well, I don't know why. 106 and a Starfighter. So it's another 101 and another Wild Weasel Phantom. You can get into the cockpit if you wish. Trabby. And you can get up close and personal to a Nighthawk. And it's kind of interesting. You're looking at the paneling and it looks sort of like dope like canvas in old aircraft then you get up really up close and personal and you'll see that there's a sort of a grain to it or a weave so my uneducated guess is it's some sort of a kevlar and resin but i'm sure there are people who know more than i on such things Logger, and you'll note the rough surface protection on the wheels and the tail fin or vertical lower stabilizer whatever they officially call it the folds out of the way this 111 escape pod actually did eject the crew survived as designed A bunch more LGBs and another Vark. Royal Air Force gets uh, another little hit here with the tornado. 
in the desert pink color scheme. Fish it wasn't pink, but I think it just kind of faded that way with uh, Durandals underneath. An osprey. Yes, these are in museums now. Spark bark. Last variant to see service with the US. Of course they're gone from Australia now as well. Of course you need sidewinders on your A10. The cannon for which actually, again, you, you think it's bigger from the photographs because you all see that photograph with the Beetle next to it. Now granted the Beetle is a small car but the gun does look a lot smaller. However, as you say, Bert. They have a, an earlier AC-130. So it's got the 20s and the 7.62s and the 40s. It does not have the 105. Which is basically a standard howitzer that you manually fling 105 rounds into. And it is a gutter. LCM and uh, looks like a tomahawk. It's a GLCM. It's basically tomahawk ground launched. Fulcrum. Doesn't explain how it ended up here. This is not a former German one. This actually was a Russian Air Force aircraft. Again with the rough field protection. And early eagle and a proper helicopter. Going Hello. out of film here a little bit. Yeah, it's uh, taking me quite a long time. It's the battery that worries me. This is a large <laughs> museum. Probably needs no introduction. Another F1, oh, it's the Thunderbird section. That is an SR 71. T38 Talon. And a bit of feel good stuff about all the awesome things the Air Force does. And we are now walking under the B-2. This was a, a, again, this is not the sort of aircraft you expect to see in a museum already. This was a developmental aircraft. And that brings us to an end of Hangar 3. So I'm being told that we're getting kicked out.